Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Let's Play Planet Coaster here on Theme Park Worldwide. I really hope you enjoyed episode 6 and 7 where of course I built my traditional ghost train. Really pleased with how that ended up and of course if you want to see an on-ride POV of that uh, check out uh, the last episode if you've not already seen it. Uh, but yes here we are episode 8 and I'm starting off by building the entrance area to the park because in the next episode, uh, number nine, we're gonna be opening the park for the first time. Getting people inside, seeing how they react to the various different rides, uh, pathways, seeing which areas and rides get busy. And of course, I'll be spending a whole episode uh, running the park as well. Uh, I wanna put more of an emphasis on that in this series because the past two parks that I've done, I've not really done much in terms of operations and, and running the park. So that's the plan. I'm gonna spend a whole episode running the park uh, and then I'm gonna close uh, it again whilst I carry on doing the construction uh, that's the plan uh, but also coming up in this episode it's going to be putting in a few more uh, little flat rides they're going to be going on the square plaza area that have built out the front of the ghost train uh, and also putting in the other entrance as well which is going to be the same as this one you'll see in a few minutes uh, how I'll create uh, a blueprint for this uh, so I can obviously put it in different areas when I want to um, but yeah it's all coming together really nicely actually pleased with how much it's progressed in so little episodes to be honest uh, and like I say a few more flat rides going in will name the ghost train of course there were some brilliant names uh, what you guys all put on episode six and seven you're all commenting with loads of different names for the ghost train and like I said I don't want to do anything too complicated uh, because you know the name it, it, I still want people sort of looking at it like oh that's the ghost train you know uh, and that's why it's got all the signage on it uh, but stay tuned for that, I will be revealing the name that I've picked. As always, I like to keep these episodes interactive. A lot of the time I build rides, what you guys are suggesting, uh, and that's going to continue. A lot of you, uh, you know, really wanted a ghost train, so I've put that in. The plan for the next ride that's going to be built after this episode, uh, of course, you know, number nine, we're going to be uh, getting people into the park. Episode 10, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to build this Schwarzkopf looping coaster, and I'm very excited to build it. I've, you know, had a little play about in another park with one just to sort of see how they go uh, and yeah I'm looking forward to putting one here uh, of course in Summerfield Shore Amusement Park and at the entrance here one of my favourite ever amusement park entrances is actually at Liseberg uh, in Gothenburg Sweden it's a beautiful entrance with the tower structure and they recently put a screen on the front that, that wasn't there a, a few years ago um, you know they put a screen on there and yeah it looks really really nice but it's still got that traditional feel with all the lights on there and obviously it follows the colour scheme of Liseberg uh, which is red and green so um, yeah it sort of follows that with the design of it and you've got like some cream and, and light colours on there as well uh, but yeah that's been there for a long time and that a lot of what I've done in this park has been inspired by the likes of Liseberg and Grunelund another park in Sweden this time in, in Stockholm the capital uh, of Sweden um, but yeah like with this we've gone for a very traditional entrance you can see we've got the horses uh, there at the side got a little bit booth uh, just out the front there as well um, just to sort of add to it obviously it's a it's a free to enter park and um, this one uh, and your paper ride with it being an amusement park but you know like Lisa Berg, Grona Lund you do have to pay normally to go into the park mainly because of how beautiful it is to walk around maybe you'd pay five or six pounds or whatever um, you know to go into this park um, but yeah same with Pleasure Beach though isn't it now in Blackpool you know it never used to be like that but obviously with Pleasure Beach you have to pay for what is it six pounds or whatever it is you know to go in and uh, I'm not too sure on what the price is these days uh, when we're having a season pass but um, yeah of course yeah just a little chat about Blackpool and stuff. Of course, we're going to be there for the opening. It's a bit of a tradition, isn't it? Going down there um, for the opening of Pleasure Beach. And that's coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Along with that, uh, we're then going to be starting off by going to a few of the UK parks in February. Uh, starting off early with that this year and, and get travelling uh, down south to do some of the parks and things. And leading up towards the opening of Thorpe Park, Chessington and Legoland. Of course, we've got the new uh, Vacoma Madhouse to get on at Legoland that I'm really looking forward to, actually. Actually, it's nice to have a new dark ride in the UK. Uh, but in terms of other things going on in the UK, there's not a lot in terms of new investments for this year, sadly. Uh, but more about that in just a second. You can see here, I'm just uh, putting in some more landscaping uh, just around the side. I mean, them trees that I'm putting in there potentially might be removed in the future if I do put a path in going to the left. But it all depends on, you know, what I want to do with this park. Um, like I say, it's not going to be a massive park. It's already looking a 
bit bigger than what I was originally planning actually uh, but it seems to be going down really well and I know a lot of you have commented saying you know Sean when you first said you were going to be doing a vintage park I didn't really think I'd, I'd find it that interesting or I don't think it'd be my cup of tea but a lot of people have said you know what you've really sort of proved me wrong with it so to speak and a vintage park uh, is something what is coming together really well so I really appreciate that as always I read every single comment what gets put on all of my videos across both of my YouTube channels and uh, of course if you've not seen my other YouTube channel it's called Adventure Sean and as I mentioned in the last episode of Planet Coaster uh, I was actually over in New York uh, where I went there not on a theme park trip as much as I went to Coney Island just to have a closed season look around uh, of course all the parks are closed at this time of year over there uh, it was about seeing all the sites and I had an amazing time I did uh, like the Empire State Building went to the top of the Rockefeller I cycled through Central Park uh, and there's more videos to come uh, from there like I say uh, Times Square that's a video that's going on today actually along with this here on Theme Park Worldwide uh, obviously there's daily uploads on this channel uh, on Adventure Sean I plan to upload every few days uh, now and uh, when the New York content finishes I'll be filming lots of stuff around the likes of Manchester Liverpool Birmingham London uh, and seeing some different things throughout the UK this year so that's something to check out if you want to a lot of people have enjoyed seeing what I get up to a wave in theme parks and uh, there was a very serious video that I did where of course I went to the uh, to ground zero uh, and, and, and filmed that around there and it was a very hard video to film uh, but the comments what people have said on there have been wonderful uh, they really have so your support I really do thank uh, you for that so of course make sure you go over to that channel and uh, check out Adventure Sean because it's very exciting this year. Uh, up here in the plaza area now, you can see I've put a toilet uh, block in just there. And I've just put some vending machines and things in as well. So it's all about facilities now. Like I say, as I've been building the, uh, the structures around this park, I've not really put in the facilities. So that's what I'm doing now. So we can actually open the park in the next episode. And I'll go back to that building in just a moment after we've put in three new rides. Starting off there with a classic bumper cars. Uh, I'm looking at all my rides there because I don't... I don't want anything what sort of is too modern uh, but obviously there's not like loads and loads of vintage rides and there's a couple on there what I want to save for the pier that I'm going to be building as well so I think we'll do the Schwarzkopf next like I say and then it'll be the pier uh, after that so yeah expect the pier sort of across maybe episodes 11 and 12 or it depends on how what the theme in and whatever takes around my Schwarzkopf but yeah stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah, a couple of rides gone in here. So on the right-hand side there, we've got one of the rides where you, you sort of use the wind to your advantage and you turn uh, like the, the ride vehicle so it spins. And of course, you've got a classic scrambler uh, there, a twister, sizzler, whatever you want to call it, on the left-hand side. I say scrambler. I think that, that's more the American way of, of, of saying it. But, um, you know, that looks like a proper old-school one as well, doesn't it? And we've still got a few of those in this country, actually, like really old ones. But mainly if you go over to the States, uh, I think of the one that I rode at Cedar Point when I was there and, and talking to Cedar Point we've got this amazing USA road trip that we've just announced as well I mean you know make sure you check out our huge announcement video we wanted to do something different come on this is theme park worldwide with the king of cheese and we thought let's do something different we don't just want to sit there and list off the parks I will be doing a video where I'm going to be talking about all the parks we're doing this year uh, sort of a sit down video uh, but for the big reveal of our main trip our biggest trip ever I thought let's do something different as well as that and we've announced it we're visiting 20 different theme parks at least 20 uh, we might you know potentially get a couple of smaller bits in as well if we get time uh, but we're doing at least 20 theme parks across America on our road trip and if you want to see all them parks check out our big reveal video here on YouTube that was posted a few days ago now and yeah it seems like you guys really enjoyed the amount of effort that we put into it and it did take quite a while to film we filmed it across a couple of days uh, but it went down well it really did and I'm glad you you enjoyed it something a bit different and you know with theme park worldwide we're, we're known for doing things a bit different and and this is the biggest trip that we've ever done and one of the biggest trips we, we've seen across uh, any theme park youtuber so i'm really looking forward to uh, to sharing that with you all uh, throughout mid-june all the way through until the start of July here on Theme Park Worldwide. Uh, there'll also be some bits for Adventure Sean uh, that we'll be filming along the way as well. 
Here you can see some more landscaping going in. Uh, a lot of people were concerned when I first put in the uh, the cable car, the, the chairlift, that oh, it looks way too straight, it, it doesn't look very natural. Now I think it really fits in actually around the, the buildings and everything. I said don't worry about it, you know, because you've got to, with them sort of transport rides, you've got to put them in first and build the park around it. As in my opinion, it just looks really odd, like, you know, supports are from funny places and things. And um, yeah, and I'm, I'm pleased with how this has come together. Uh, yeah, it looks really nice. There's only one, there's one support, what you can see just to the left hand side of the plaza that's just on the path. Uh, but I don't think that's uh, too much of an issue, to be honest. I think uh, I'm going to put some benches and stuff around there, as you'll see later on in the episode. Uh, but yeah, just more planting and stuff, not particularly heavily theming, but just some more like landscape in there, a few little rocks and things about, just, you know, as you'd expect from a really well landscaped park. And, and that's what this is all about. Summerfield Shore, as much as it's a seafront seaside park it's all about having that the flowers the gardens which are a big part of it uh, and yeah like i think you know it's time to build the the major roller coaster uh, with the next ride that gets installed uh, in episode number 10 there we are i was losing track then <laughs> uh, but yes anyway let's uh, carry on here putting in some more landscaping and i'm going to talk about uh, the name for the ghost train that i have selected now, as always, you guys have been amazing when it comes to naming things in this game. Uh, like, I build these things, but you guys come up with the storylines, the names. You're great when it comes to that. So thank you very much for everyone uh, that comments on the videos with names, storylines, suggestions for rides, everything. Like I say, I'm, I'm very passionate about reading comments uh, and replying and hearting your comments. I do it all the time because I like to know what you guys think to the videos and uh, not just Planet Coaster, in general, everything on the channel. Uh, I really like to see what you guys think and I really appreciate your feedback. So a big thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for everyone that comments on the videos and, and lets me know how we're doing. Uh, you can see just here, before I mention the names, uh, this building going in here, obviously we've put the toilet facilities in there, a staff area and also some food units. Just another filler uh, food area here with a bit of a different building style I'm going for. A very fairy tale British style building going in here. Uh, you know, and with like I say, with this not being a theme park, it's it's not themed areas or anything. Um, so yeah, this is just a, a nicely decorated building that's going in on that corner there. And you've got the path that runs underneath the scenic railway uh, and you'll see this first and then you can sort of delve deeper behind it towards, towards the couple of flat rides and obviously uh, the ghost train there as well. The ghost train that we're about to name. Now, like I said, I don't want anything too complicated uh, story-wise or name-wise uh, because I still want it to be referred to as the ghost train. It's more like, you know, like when you go to Thorpe Park for example a lot of the time you don't say you know we're going on Darren Brown Rise of the Demon like it's actually called now you just sort of say oh yeah should we go on Darren Brown you know so I want people to say like oh yeah we're going on the ghost train but actually there's a more deeper name meaning behind it so to speak and I looked through all of your comments which were fantastic uh, but Pyro Studios video that's the name of the channel uh, so big shout out to you uh, came up with some brilliant names they suggested a few actually uh, but I really liked the name the riddle house um, because I sort of like it as a sub name it's like ghost train the Riddle House uh, and they put this nice little uh, sort of description which I kind of say you'd say in like a pre-show or something but not maybe on an old ride like this where pre-shows didn't really exist so much um, but this would maybe just play uh, on, a, on an old school audio track uh, and it'd say this so a haunted house question mark awesome let's go explore bones scatter the floor what's that at the end of the hall find out at the riddle house and apparently it's based on an abandoned house in orlando florida uh, is that where you're from orlando let us know i'd love to know let us know where you're from um, it's cool i've personally seen it uh, this person says so there you go thank you to pyro studios video for that awesome name suggestion there i just really like that the riddle house ghost train the riddle house uh, now open at summerfield shore amusement park that's the tv advert but uh, there you go uh, yeah i'm really pleased with that name so thank you for suggesting it and yeah like i say there's going to be nothing to name now uh, for the next episode but i am going to be building this schwarzkopf looping coaster so let me know your thoughts i'm not going to go with like a standard style layout a bit like uh, olympia looping or munich looping as it's known at hyde park winter wonderland Whoa, it's nice with the lights on there isn't it uh, i'm going to go with a more 
you know, custom layout we're thinking. I mean, I really like Leesburg Bannon uh, on the hillside. Uh, I know that's manufactured, well, Ziera, isn't it? And kind of the layout was like Schwarzkopf, wasn't it? But I'm thinking, you know, a bit like Leesburg Bannon, but it's going to have loops in it, of course. But that sort of style, I'm thinking a bit of a custom layout, nothing, you know, I want it to be a bit different than just a standard layout. So there you go. Let me know some suggestions. And yeah, let me know down in the comments. I'd like to know what you guys think. I've got a lot of things going on in my head with it at the moment and I just want to see what you guys think and yeah I'll go from there so there we go you can tell I'm deep in thought there whilst I'm thinking about it here I'm just now finishing a few bits up over the next few minutes really uh, before wrapping up the episode uh, obviously you know with this park realistically you wouldn't be letting people in through the second entrance which I've put in at the other cable car station um, because it's not decorated or anything but I am going to let people in for this little tease so to speak of the park uh, because I just want to see how people flow and things when we are running it with two entrances as much as the plan is to maybe add a third and possibly even fourth entrance with it being an amusement park uh, in the future I just want to see how it runs and I want to open the cable car as well so I thought if I don't open that entrance I can't really open the cable car I just want to see people on it and see how they react to it and you know do they point at looking at the views and stuff like that I'm not too sure but we'll uh, find out so yeah just putting in some flowers and, and things like that in now underneath this section and we're coming to the end of, of doing behind uh, the actual wooden coast of the scenic railway which is good uh, because I've been doing that for quite a while now so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to uh, sort of working back around the front of it again and we've, we've sort of done behind that now it's like moving forward because uh, I said for a while it's gonna have to be very careful about what I put behind the scenic railway in terms of sight lines and things but yeah that's uh, you know it's nearly done uh, here you can see, like I said, it's putting in some more seating area, mainly for the little uh, cafe that I've put on the corner, and also just to help with that support just there as well. There wasn't really much I could have done with that, uh, with that support there. But I thought, you know, in a way, it keeps it more realistic, keeping it in the middle. I mean, I throw back to the likes of um, the old Skyway, what used to be at Magic Kingdom and Disneyland, um, the, the Disney parks, you know, like where they had the supports, especially in Magic Kingdom, where, I don't know if you've ever seen a photo, but it used to run outside It's a Small World, and you can see a little change in the path uh, where the support used to be. And it was just right there, slap bang in the middle of the the path I think it was raised up a little bit and you know so yeah fantastic isn't it so I sort of wanted to have that feel with that support there and, and you know it doesn't look too bad I don't think so yeah just putting in some seating lots of benches and things around here not as many benches around as I put in the gardens area yeah you know some people said oh I went a bit OTT on the benches in there you know it's just a nice sitting down garden area let's put loads of benches in you know and see how it goes with the guests if they don't use them then I'll probably take some of the benches out in that area and here you can see just working along the perimeter of the park uh, sort of in between this episode and number nine I'm going to be putting in some more trees and stuff like you see around the front of the park there I'm going to be finishing that off a little bit more in between the episode and um, before we open it and you'll notice that when we come into it also putting in some more trees behind the ferris wheel as well but I thought that you know I can't just record me putting in loads of trees all the time time you know it's not very exciting is it but that's why I show you a little bit here realistically this took about 40 minutes putting in all these plants and things but I thought you know I'll just show you it uh, sped up and, and cut in between the different clips there as well uh, but there you go thank you very much for watching another episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster here on Theme Park Worldwide I'll be back soon like I say episodes are at least once a week sometimes a couple of times a week here on the channel and um, so yeah make sure you stay tuned for those and here's a little look back there on the entrance to Summerfield Shore Amusement Park Park. and yeah it's got that classic feel uh, that I'm really pleased with and I can't wait to see the coasters running round the ferries wheel with people on uh, you know we'll see it at night time as well and share lots of uh, footage for you to see thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode